Thank you for joining us today for our presentation on MPH Diagnostics. This is Jack Miller with Service Company Solutions, and we're going to go over um, MPH Diagnostics, kind of an overview first, and then right into the program. So we're going to start here with the benefits of um, MPH Diagnostics. We've developed this, this product to help you in multiple ways. One of the first ones is it's, it's saving time doing triage. So in a matter of a second, you can enter a model number into the program and it will take and locate the common parts that have been used on that uh, model um, and, and display the top 10 right on your screen within a fraction of a second. So it's very quick. Um, so it saves the time in looking at exploded views of and diagrams of, of products. Um, and these are the information is coming from completed repairs, which means that it's information that's coming from the actual um, closed jobs from servicers like yourself. So it helps with um, with um, precision, making sure that it's the right information based on the model that you're working on, and then real-time world experience. The next thing it does is it improves customer service. Let's say that you have a customer service agent and she can get the model from the customer. She can type it in, type in the customer's complaint, say no power, and it will highlight something like say a fuse kit. Um, those are, are um, great resources for you to be able to have them look and see, do we have that fuse kit part number XYZ in stock? And then turn around and be able to um, look it up and tell the customer, I don't have that in today. We can get that on order, have it tomorrow, save you uh, some time so that we're not having to take two afternoons and um, we'll bring that part out with us that we think is gonna fix it. Schedule them for tomorrow and you've, you've just saved a, a second trip to the, uh, to the house, hopefully. So it improves customer service because they're not having to take two afternoons off from work, et cetera. The next thing is it increases your first call completes. So by being able to triage before you go out, making sure you have the parts on in stock, you're saving the, the cost of making that return trip. And if you look at it from the blue book standpoint, we know that it costs 80 to $90 average cost to send a training technician out to a house. So um, it may not cost as much for the second trip, but the reality is it's still um, a significant amount of money. And if you can eliminate that, it goes straight to your bottom line. So first call completes are, are very important and this product should help increase those. Next, we have um, tools for less experienced staff. So as I mentioned earlier, that CSR, let's say that you have a new technician and you're training him and they're, they're not 100% confident in diagnosing, um, this will help to steer them in the right direction. I can't say it's going to be 100% accurate every time, but it's certainly going to get them to the correct part numbers based on the model they're working on. And also, hopefully, um, based on the complaint, they can narrow that down to, you know, one or two parts. So hopefully that will help. Um, the uh, the software itself integrates into Service Desk and ePass. And uh, so it makes it so that it's a seamless usage for your technicians in the field. And uh, um, if you're using uh, those programs in office, you can also do this lookup um, right through the program itself. I don't have that on the display today for our presentation, but I will show you the web interface and then the services on the web interface integrate right into those products. So you still get those services are just in a, a little different format inside the products, the, the softwares themselves. Next is sharing data improves the results. So this is all based on service companies information. So um, the more people that participate, the stronger the, the program gets and the, the better the results are for everybody. So um, if you're sharing your data, it takes and, and allows for um, the, the program to take in and increase the volume of not only the customer complaints, but the number of times a specific part was put on. And it helps to verify that the information that's, that's being displayed is correct. So it's helpful for everybody if you share your, your data. Um, you, it, it allows you to see your customer complaints as well. So if you're using the program, but you can't share your data or you don't share your data, then you can still search customer complaints, but you can't physically see them. So it, uh, it does take and, and gives you a, a little bit of a benefit by being able to see those, those customer complaints.
The next thing is if you're sharing your data, it re reduces the cost of the service. So um, we'll see pricing here in just a minute, but it's 18 cents per lookup. Um, but if you're sharing your data, that drops down to 12 cents per lookup. So it saves you a little bit of money because you're contributing back to the program. And I'm going to do some features real quick of the program. Um, you'll see the top 10 parts instantly based on the exact model. So um, we'll see that. I'm going to do a demo as soon as I'm done with this little presentation, and you'll be able to see that in real time. Next, um, or any other parts used at the same time. That's that's huge, you know. Um, if you're in here, I'll show you one where um, three quarters of the time, or two thirds of the time at least, it's it's requiring a second part be installed. So um, if you're thinking it's one thing, and you get out there and you put that on, but it also needs an additional part, the system will tell you if that's been the case in the past. Additionally. Um, you can, you can find the parts by doing a search in here um, on, on what's the customer's complaint. So it'll highlight the parts in green and uh, the stronger the green, the stronger the match to the, the search criteria that you entered. And finally, the percentage um, that the specific part fixed on the appliance. So 43% of the time, this part fixed the appliance or 12% um, of the time, this part was used to fix the appliance. So all those things combined gives you a great resource for being able to locate the, um, uh, the potential fix for this appliance and eliminate a lot of things that it, it probably wouldn't be. So to, to get there, you have to go to diagnostics.mypartshelp.com. Uh, although the domain looks the same as the mypartshelp.com, um, this is a brand new platform for us. We just launched it earlier this year, and it uses the same technology as Google Search, so it's very fast. Unfortunately, our legacy products don't work on this new platform yet. So um, you have to go, you have to enter that diagnostics dot in front of mypartshelp.com in order to get to that. So let me escape out of here. So when you go to diagnostics.mypartshelp.com, you come to this page. This is kind of our home page or opening screen. Um, right up front, we want to make sure that you can see the pricing. We're not trying to hide anything with this product. There's a one-time setup charge of $49. It's 18 cents per lookup if you are contributing or uploading through Service Desk or ePass, and currently that's the only two processes that you can do that. Um, it, it drops down to 12 cents. We have a minimum per month of $20, and we have a maximum for the first three months. So for the first three months of usage, the maximum is $100, okay? After that, it's gonna be whatever you actually use, but you'll have a really good idea after three months of how much you're gonna use it. Okay. If you, if you want to sign up, you click on the sign up now button and you register. If you already have a My Parts Help account, you still have to re-register for this product. It does not carry over currently. Um, if you've already registered, then you can go to log in. And if you'd like more information, we have a brochure that we've scanned and uploaded to um, under more information. It's the same one that we bring to the, to the trade shows. And so if you've already seen that, um, you, you'll, don't necessarily need to read it again. So you just click on login, enter your credentials, and it's gonna take you to this page. I've already logged in just to save us a little bit of time. When you're ready, you just start entering a model. So let's say we're gonna work on a KitchenAid dishwasher. Once you start entering the information, the system is gonna take and try to um, auto-populate. So I'm just gonna click on the second one, which is the same one that I use in our brochure, just keeps everything consistent for me. So based on this exact model, within a fraction of a second, you had um, the top 10 parts that have been used to repair this, the um, similar matches, which we'll go over in just a minute, and um, the percentage of time that each part has been used to make the repair. So based on this, the number one thing, this part number 8194001, is a cable roller kit for this KitchenAid dishwasher. It's 30 36% of all repairs are done with just this one roller kit. Kind of cool to know that right up front. 10% um, of the time, this ASC percentage is associated parts. 10% of the time, there were additional parts put on at the same time. So if we go down, that's not a huge number. I don't think that I would let that um, persuade me to bring out a whole bunch of additional parts. But if I go down here to the user interface, that one is 70% of the time. 
So 70% of the time, or approximately two thirds of the time, uh, there's an additional part that's needed to complete this repair. And if I click on that, it will give you those details to show you that that repair um, often requires the control panel, the control boards, the ribbon cable, even the cable roller kit down here, um, which is why it's um, helping to populate this 10% is because when they did the other um, user interface, they also put in, uh, fix the cable roller kits at the same time. So gives you kind of an idea. So we're gonna dismiss that real quick. So um, if you are sharing, your parts information if you're uploading and sharing. Um, you can actually click over here and see, oops, sorry, that's the wrong one. Dismiss. Click on the little person talking and you can, you can actually see the complaints. If it is a light gray like this one here, there's no, no complaints available. And if you don't share your data, then it's gonna be the same thing. There won't be anything available to see. But if you are sharing your complaints, you can click on it and it's gonna tell you what the customer said based on your own company's history. Now, you can't see my company's complaints and you can't see your neighbor's company's complaints, but you can see your own. We do have the ability with that to be able to share between companies with both companies' permissions. So let's say that you're part of a peer group and you want all, all the people in your peer group to be able to see each other's complaints, you can do that. Why don't we just automatically show them all? We don't show them all because people put in information like customers' names or phone numbers or quote amounts. Um, and so we don't want to take in, and we consider all that proprietary, we don't want to display that to other people. So that's why we don't automatically just show the customer complaints. Now, with that said, you do have the ability to see them. Uh, I'm sorry, to search them, not see them, search them. So you click on recommended, type in the complaint like, Let's just say no power. All right, so the system goes out and it highlights parts. Now, based on the brightness of the green, that means it's a stronger match. So in this case, the, the strongest match was the fuse kit. Um, so that would make a lot of sense with no power. And if we click on the little person talking here, no power, um, not coming on, has, has power, that's a different one. Um, stopped mid-cycle, won't start. Um, not coming on, not coming on, um, won't finish the cycle. Um, so you can you can just kind of go through and see different complaints and and but it's it did search those. Now not only did it search our internal ones, it searched everybody that's participating on the system. So that this is not just returning your local results, it's using the much larger database to be able to take and show information across the board um, and, and narrow those, those uh, searches down. So the second one is the user interface, which makes sense that it could cause some power issues, that it's not coming on because the, there's an issue with the user interface. Um, and then it highlights these control boards and cu uh, customer uh, control panels it does that because it's, it's taking in often those were associated with that user interface. So um, if, if the fuse kit doesn't take care of it, and that would be the piece I would take out with me the first time, then you could take in and look at the user interface and then dig down and figure out which of those control boards should go out on the specific uh, dishwasher that you're working on. So that's how the, the recommended works. Um, the other little boxes here is uh, the, the model numbers that you're working with. So when we're working with the exact match side, which is this one over here, that model number is just going to be the one. If we look at similar matches, and let's say there wasn't a lot of information based on this exact match, um, but let's say because we're working on the stainless steel, they don't sell very many of the stainless steels, but the, the red ones and the blue ones and the black ones and the green ones all um, have more information. Similar match is looking at multiple models of related appliances. So in this case, if I scroll over that, you can see on the screen and I can click on it to make it a little bit larger. This is all of the models that it's pulling information to give you, I dismiss that, to give you the information for similar match. So um, cable roller kit on across other matches, 
similar matches is 39%. So it's even a little higher percentage than on the stainless steel. So the idea with this is that if there isn't a ton of stuff on exact match, you may still be able to get where you want to go looking at similar matches. Um, so if it's something that's fairly new on the, on the market and there hasn't been a ton of repairs, maybe this will take and help guide you at least in the right direction with that particular appliance. All right. Um, you can see more results by clicking down here on um, view more results. Um, and, and it's going to show you everything that, that it's used. It pre-sorts based on the, the, most, the most used, the highest percentages at the top. And what we like to tell everyone is if you're seeing a quantity here that is 10 to 20, you can be pretty confident that this part number over here is correct. Um, if it's ones or twos, those could be one off. So you want to make sure that you're double checking part numbers and that you're getting the correct, the correct thing. Um, some of the aftermarket parts and that kind of stuff, um, we don't necessarily recommend that you use them, but if you do, those are going to certainly show up further down the list. Um, so we, we, OEM is going to be your, your higher quantities and that's what we recommend that you use on your, on your appliances. But, um, anything that's been used is going to show up. And again, we're, we tell you to question them if you're, if you're only getting ones and twos on those. Okay. Um, if it's a, if it's a newer product, again, that may be where you start. If you have a, a low volume of repairs, your recommended isn't going to work because there's not enough data for the system to be able to try to, to strapulate a, a good conclusion. So, um, even though it may show that there's been 50 repairs on this appliance and you can see the numbers over here, you do a search and it may show nothing because there's not enough confirming data for the system to be able to make that match. Um, what else? That's, that's the, the system in a nutshell. Um, it does integrate. It does have most of these functions. There is a little yellow box here, a little triangle, um, and that's to report an issue. If you see something that's wrong in here, then you can report that back to our programmers and they'll take a look at them and, and uh, try to make any corrections they can. Um, that particular feature does not, is not available in the other programs currently. That's something that we're, we're working on and just tested, but uh, the rest of it is, should be functioning in, the, in both the service desk and uh, ePass, um, I believe. ePass is at least working on the getting the latest up-to-date version going. I'm not sure if they're complete yet, but they will be shortly if not. Anyway, that's the, that's the product. Um, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to give us a call. It's toll-free 877-877 again, 8635. Option one will get you right to me, and I'll be happy to answer questions. And I can also do a, a private demo if you'd like to see it yourself, and we can look up some stuff specifically for you. So again, that's 877-TWICE, 8635, option one. And uh, we appreciate you joining us today. Thanks.